This is an excerpt from uh, the introduction in the Russian Catacomb Saints, and I'm. It's a story basically uh, that was written. Uh, an article that was written by uh, Andreev, which I think is not about the Catacomb Saints per se. It's about the stance of the Christian before great evil, and so that very very much is appropriate for our talk tonight. But it's also revealing as to who the man was, the depth of his uh, sensitive soul and the ethos that he carried. And I think it's very instructive. I was, I remember reading this book, it's my third time reading this book now, the first time I read it, the second time I, I came back again and again to this story as one of the most uh, compelling of the entire uh, book, actually. So I, I, I want to lead with this because I think it's going to set the stage, set the tone, as it were, for our course. And it's very important for us to have the right stance, the right outlook, if we're going to understand the uh, the new martyrs. All right, so let's, let's read the story. Uh, essentially, it's just excerpts from the story because it's not fully translated. A 29-year-old mother in New York City in a fit of rage beat to death her two-month-old son, leaving him unimaginably deformed. She expressed no regret over her crime. This is something that, this is 1960s, 70s, he's writing. How much more today? We have these senseless crimes, this insanity of the modern world. And he says, people have become deaf to sufferings, the insensitivity of the world today. They either do not hear, that should be here, or do not wish to hear about what is done, not in a nightmare, but in reality. All for one and one for all are guilty. This is the essence of the social ethic of Christianity. We're all guilty, for we're all sinful. We do evil, contribute our evil to the universal storehouse of evil. I'm going to read that again. We contribute our evil to the universal storehouse, quote unquote, storehouse of evil. And this evil accumulates into an immense universal energy of evil and seeks for its incarnation in the vessels of bodies without grace. And when it finds them, it becomes incarnate in them and they perform great evil deeds. Let each one think of himself. What were you doing on that evening when this unbelievable but true authentic evil deed was performed? Perhaps it was your sin, your immoral deed, your malice, which turned out to be the last little drop which caused the vessel of evil to overflow. This is the way we must reflect if we are Christians. I love this. This is so important. It's so far from moralism and legalism. It's so far from Pharisaism and hypocrisy. Right? It is, it is, it is so important. Let's let's go on. I don't want to stop. Uh, we'll come back and comment at the end. Let's see. Weep, brothers and sisters. Do not be ashamed of these tears. Weep. And let these tears be the fount in which the Lord will baptize the child martyr, who was probably unbaptized, being chrismated in place of oil with his innocent child's blood. Weep. Let your tears also be a fount of a different energy, an energy of good that fights against the energy of evil which by its power will save at least one child from innocent tortures and at least one criminal mother from an unforgivable sin. Let these tears also awaken many of the indifferent. Do not be ashamed to weep with tears of grief and compassion and repentance. This is so incredibly important. Uh, you see how the activist, moralist approach is totally absent here. How the spiritual, the deep spiritual insight into the, into the unity of mankind, into the, into the spiritual struggle behind uh, all of the physical destruction that goes on in the world. The sensitivity to the, uh, to the fact that 
every one of us contributes either negatively or positively, either through sin or through virtue, to the sta state of the world. And no one can stand aside and say, I have nothing to do with this. It's not no, none of, no concern to me uh, what is happening uh, here or there or uh, on the other side of the earth. We're all one body of humanity. And in the church, we're all in Christ, brothers and sisters. Only in the church is that spiritual family, that spiritual relationship established. And so even more so with that spiritual connection, we are co-responsible in the church. If something is happening that's evil in your time or place, uh, in your church, in your parish, in your family, in your community, and you stand aside and say, it has nothing to do with me. I'm not responsible. Are you co-responsible? Are you connecting and, and identifying as, as we see here in the story by Andreev? Do you have this stance? So we think so legalistically and, 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 and moralistically about Christ and, and the spirit of God and the, and the spiritual life. We miss this message. This is such an important message. And if we're going to properly understand the greatness of the new martyrs and why some people will say, well, what's the point? What was the point of of standing up and confessing. It didn't change anything. There was, it would have been more wise to do what Sergius did and to protect the buildings and the status of the church and all the rest, right? Because uh, it was obviously fruitless, it was pointless to try to fight against this, this, this bestial power that would rip everything apart in its path. And yet that approach is a rationalistic, legalistic approach, doesn't understand the connection doesn't understand the importance of repentance and the stance. This is a stance that one has throughout one's life. This is not something that comes and goes. This is an outlook, a stance of a Christian uh, of repentance. Uh, and when the Lord calls us to repentance, he's not calling us to that moralistic, legalistic, rationalistic stance of so many. He's calling us to this. He's calling us to feeling we are co-responsible for all of humanity and especially all of those who are brothers and sisters in Christ, and that we are co-responsible for the state of the world, the state of our brothers and sisters, how much more in our family. Right? We stand oftentimes in judgment of our children or our wife or our husband. We do not have this stance of repentance, of self-knowledge, how we are all co-responsible for what goes on. If your children, your brothers and sisters, your wife, it doesn't don't, do not understand, do not follow the path, do things that are evil, do things that are sinful. How do you approach that? Do you say that's their problem, how sinful they are, how bad they are, like the Pharisee, the hypocrite? Or do you say, it's I am the cause of them not being closer to Christ because I do not use my time and, and the gifts that God has given me, my freedom to be a... Uh, a spiritual bomb for all of those around me. So this is an amazing uh, insight on the part of, of our, uh, our, uh, our author of our text. I think it's important that we keep it in mind as we go through the whole book. It also shows the greatness of his soul.